One thing I've clearly noticed since I've been riding around in Perth since mid-December is quite a number of people not wearing a helmet, and that's both absolute numbers and uh, proportion of people not riding a helmet. And to back up this feeling, I, the other day I took some footage when I went riding around the Swan River. I was just riding from uh, the Narrows Bridge to the Canning. There's a, about a 12 kilometre loop around both sides of the river. And I counted every cyclist that I passed and noted were they wearing a helmet, not wearing a helmet, male or female. Uh, I didn't break this down into adults and kids. Let's just, this is about as far as I want to do the breakdown. The interesting thing was in total, uh, 30% of the people cycling were women. In Sydney, I think you're usually lucky to get up to about 10%. And I think that's because women perceive cycling to be risky and not particularly safe. And so it's really the only adventurous ones that go out and cycle. Whereas Perth, I think, has reached a pretty good level of, uh, of safety and risk reduction. And there's a lot more women proportionally cycling. And, and this doesn't matter whether it's uh, casual cyclists, as you'll see in this video, or sports slash fitness people who are screaming around the morning, you know, uh, like they're training for the Tour de France. But when we look at helmet versus non-helmet usage, uh, you can see that uh, 30 people were wearing a helmet and 16 weren't. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a pretty high percentage, that's a pretty high percentage of people not wearing a helmet, you know, over 33%. And the other thing to note is I did counts when I was in Sydney about this time last year during the lockdowns of the number of people I saw not wearing a helmet when there were just hordes of people cycling around everywhere. And from memory serves, I don't think I ever got above 10 on any particular day. And, and that seemed to be a really high number for Sydney. So this is just a normal day in Perth, and I'm counting 16, and, a, and 16 out of a very small total. I think when I was doing those counts in Sydney, the, the total number of people was, I don't know, six or 800 or something like that, and there were 10 not wearing a helmet. Here we've got a total of 46 people and 16 not wearing a helmet. But what I also found interesting is um, the helmet versus no helmet, uh, 10 males, 6 females. So 38% of um, the people not wearing a helmet were women, as against a, a total of 30%. So actually, non-compliance was higher amongst women than men, which, which is pretty interesting. You know, I guess you could have a big debate about uh, perceptions of safety and risk and all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, I, I guess that's pointing to the infrastructure just being very safe and people saying, well, I don't need a helmet. I'm riding on a fully separated bike path. I mean, we're, there's meters between me and the road. There's this big strip of grass. In a lot of places, even the pedestrians and the cyclists are completely separated. You know, there's 10 meters between me and the pedestrians. So you know, what's, what's going to cause me to crash? Uh, you know, you look at the common types of crashes, well, that you'd be worried about. One running into a car or a car running into you. Well, it's really not going to happen because there's only a few places where the road crosses the path, and those in those cases it's usually a car park entrance. And drivers drive up and down at about 20 or 30 kilometres an hour. There's good sight lines. The risk of an impact is very low, and because of the low speeds, the um, the outcome of a of a collision would not be terribly serious. You know compared to being hit at 50 kilometres an hour. Um, what else? Well, you might run into a pedestrian. Well, like I said, for most of the, uh, the circuit, pedestrians and cyclists are fully separated, so that's not going to happen. Uh, I could have a collision with another cyclist. Well, the path is very wide, so someone would have to be completely out of control and on the wrong side of the path, you'd hit them. And it's not like these paths have trees and stuff close next to them. There's you know, like 100 metres of grass on, on your left-hand side. So if someone's on the wrong side of the path, you just run off the path onto the grass. Uh, the worst that could possibly happen is it might happen near one of the duck lakes, and you might end up in a duck lake with the ducks. Uh, you know, the only real risk I can see at times is you'll have low ducks flying quite low from the river across to one of these ponds or lakes, and you might collect one as they fly across in front of you. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to rack my brains for how you could possibly fall off if you've got both hands on the handlebars. There's, there's no potholes. Um, 
you know all those kind of things you'd worry about hitting on the path which might throw you off like uh, sticks or rocks or potholes etc they don't exist you know and, and I've come off plenty of times myself I've hit uh, you know wet tram lines at an angle I've hit uh, a cigarette packet as I was going around a corner that caused my front wheel to go out from underneath me I've been hit by two drivers that uh, were breaking the law um, you know I've, I've crashed on mountain bike tracks more times than I you know care to remember so yeah you know, I know there's there's lots and lots of ways to crash but on that circuit you'd have to be pretty unlucky to uh, to have a prank um, God, where was I going with that? No, anyway, I think that's why there's so many people on that circuit not wearing a helmet. But I want to make one thing very clear, and that is, this is very time of day and location dependent. So this circuit, like I said, it's a, it's a 12 kilometer circuit. This was the middle of the day. Most of the people who are out cycling were what you might call casual cyclists. Uh, they, were, they were riding upright bikes or e-bikes. There were a few. There was one guy on a time trial bike who was screaming along. There were a couple of people on road bikes who were going pretty quick. But on the whole, people were out just doing casual, relaxed. Oh, I'm going to go do a loop of uh, of the of the um, Swan River, just like someone would go and do a loop of the Bay Run kind of thing. Low speed, and I guess that's really important to note as well. None of these people were screaming along at high speed, which is another factor in crashing. Um, on on the other hand. If you uh, go out on any of the commuter routes or any of the fitness slash um, uh, sporting type uh, routes, you know, which is what I did this morning, you'll see 10 times the number of cyclists as I saw on this thing, and every single one of them will be wearing a helmet. But, you know, that's just the way it is. If you're doing sport slash fitness cycling and you're traveling at well over 25 kilometers now, you're wearing a helmet. If you want to go out with a, on a training ride with a, uh, an established group, you must wear a helmet. They will not let you join without a helmet. Uh, you know, all the people I saw commuting to work, coming in fairly rapidly this morning, all wearing helmets. So, you know, it's, it's not this kind of across the board thing. So, you know, I think Perth has a, a much larger casual cycling culture, I think, I guess you'd call it that, than I see in Sydney. And I guess the people who are indulging in that view the infrastructure as so safe uh, because they're removed from vehicle traffic that a helmet is you know, a complete waste of time. Uh, whether you agree that's a good thing or not, well, I mean, that's up to you. But that, that's my take on it. That's my perception of what's going on here. They've built safe infrastructure in a Dutch style and they're following Dutch culture in not wearing helmets because they're completely irrelevant.